Hi, and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Chelsea from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And today is Monday, March 25th, and we are nearing the end of the month already. Yes, crazy fast. Yeah. And it's spring. Spring has sprung officially. I like it. Spring has sprung. In the Northern Hemisphere. Little League, we are in the midst of it. Lots of activities since the weather is like really nice out here. Yes, that's why we live here (laughs) this this time of year, the weather. Okay, so we have some fun topics today, some fun things to talk about. But first, we are going to talk about our sponsor, Cozy Earth. Yes, we are really grateful to have Cozy Earth as our sponsor. And especially this time of year, as the weather is warming up and you don't have to switch out your sheets because the Cozy Earth sheets are temperature regulating and they work beautifully in the winter. They work beautifully in the transitions such as we're in now. And they're also perfect for the warm weather months. So we're really grateful for the Cozy Earth products that we have. We love our sheets. We've got the socks. We've got Billy's gloves, his joggers, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> they are his favorites, he I'm, says. I'm still wearing them. As, as my mom mentioned, weather's warming up. They're still... They're still staying wow. in, in my wardrobe selection right now. Yeah, they, they, yeah. I think you I think like I think that's a really good testament of temperature regulating. If you can sort of wear jogger pants, something that can keep you warm in the winter, but also I'm not, you know, it's not too hot to wear as weather starts warming up. Right. Yeah, and they have a lot of great pajama options now too for yeah. spring and summer. I noticed as I was browsing the website. So be sure to visit cozyearth.com. And take 35% off at checkout with the code AQUILTINGLIFE. Okay. And so actually, we have mom's quilts again this week. And the reason why is I was just finishing up quilts. And by now, they should be all done (laughs) from the time we're filming this. And so mom has the quilts this week. So can you share some more Laguna Sunrise quilts with us? Yes. And then... Chelsea will have the next two episodes yes, in a row will be Chelsea I promise. <laughs> so, okay, on the wall is Shine Remix. And my original Shine Quilt pattern was my fifth pattern ever. And I've always wanted to remake it in our fabric collection. And so, and I also wanted to bring it back into a booklet style format. So when I did that, I decided to offer two different sizes of quilt. This is actually the smaller of the two oh, wow. quilts included in the pattern. Yeah. And the bigger one is perfect for a twin size bed. And then I also included the shine mini in the pattern, which used to be a standalone pattern. So cute. So which I love, love, love. And the mini, I actually used lighter low volume prints oh. around the center block. In the bigger quilt, I used the gray, but I love these low volumes. I almost kind of think that would have been really fun in the bigger quilt yes, too. Yes, because it really brightens it. it. Brightens I knew something it. was different, but yes. I, yeah. Yeah, and I made that one first and then this one second. And I yeah. I think if I was going to make that one again, I would use you the would low volume. with the low volume. Yeah. Well, but, if you make the bigger size, you can do right. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I love how it uses all of the... Fabrics. This pattern is actually written for fat quarters, and you can get the mini out of your scraps, regardless of if you make the smaller of the two bigger quilts or the larger. The other thing is, I actually did make this with fat eights, but it was super, super close. Yeah. It was super tight. So I went ahead and did fat quarters for the yeah, pattern. Yeah, I would have done that too. Even if you had excess, I, I don't, I think I've talked about this before. Even if you have excess, when I design, I do like a little bit of excess because you could use it for a separate project. Right. A little wiggle room. Nobody's mad about having too much fabric left over. But if you really wanted to go fat eights instead of fat quarters, you could also get a charm pack to use for the block centers. And then you would be able to make it work for sure with fat eighth for the smaller version. Yeah. And then on the table is my good vibes quilt. And I love, love, love this quilt. This is actually a two-person quilt. My friend Nancy Lane pieced the blocks for me. I sent her, it's a fat eighth friendly quilt. I sent her the fat eighths and the background fabric and she pieced all of the blocks and then sent the blocks back. 
And then I put them all together with the sashing and the inner border and the outer border. And this one was quilted by Miriam Bott. I forgot to mention Shine on the Wall and the Mini Shine were both quilted by Val Krieger. So anyway, Good Vibes has been just one of my favorites. I really want to make one of these blocks as a pillow. Yeah. I, I just love, love, love. It's a love. good size it's for that. It's a good size for a couch yeah. pillow. A bigger block than I usually sew with this quilt. Yeah, normally I am the one doing bigger block quilts, but yeah. this time around I do have some quilts that are smaller, have yeah. smaller blocks, but the quilt is still large. Right. It like stresses me out not to have a large quilt. Uh-huh. I need to stop that. And this Good Vibes quilt is large. It's 80 by 80. Whoa. That's a big that's one. That's normally my thing. But yes. I don't know what happened. Oh my goodness. I have to say something about the shine pattern in general, though. It is actually the very first quilt I made. Oh. And I used Big <laughs> Tree Fabrics, and I, I showed it in the video, uh-huh. the, the box, and I did it in Christmas, obviously, from Fig Tree & Co., a yeah. fabric collection. I can't remember what it is. I think oh. I used the farmhouse collection, right. but I picked the reds and the greens. And I remember thinking, why did I choose my very first quilt pattern with quarter square triangles? I thought it was <laughs> the most daunting thing oh. in the world. And I called mom a million times and none of my points are there. But yeah, Shine is the very first quilt I made. Oh, that is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> Just FYI. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I also, we want to mention at the beginning, Moda Fabrics is having their 50th anniversary come out. Well, th- it's happening. It's their 50th anniversary. <laughs> it's their 50th anniversary. And so along with that, celebrating 50 years of Moda, they are having a contest. And we'll put a link where you can find information about it. But they actually would like entries in different categories, pieced quilts, art quilts, Next Generation Quilter, which would be a youth category for quilters 17 or younger. Oh. Yeah. So, and they've got some cash prize awards for each category. And yeah. So, first place, $2,500. Second place, $1,000. Third place, one Moda Fat Quarter bundle a month for a year. (laughs) And what? That's. Um, a pretty good prize. Yeah. And so the wow. entries have to be received by March 1st, 2025. So you have plenty of time. We'll put the information out there. And there is a fabric collection to go along with this where there it, it's gradiated. This is a design roll. So these are five inches by with a fabric, but yeah. you can buy it by the yard. And so they've got different prints from all of the designers ours actually doesn't show up in this design roll but if it's you in one get them. the yardage it would be in the yardage so yeah so yeah really fun and the the hang tag is mark and yeah. josh and brian so i thought that was fun when is the deadline to enter Next year, March 1st. Oh, okay. 2025. That, that's yeah. what I was, when you, you said like, March, I'm like, wait, it's almost over. Yeah. We passed it. So, and this was actually something I was thinking of when Moda had their 40th anniversary. That was when Chelsea actually went for the first time to market. Do you remember we went to the party in the Astro Stadium? Oh my goodness. That so, was the 40th? That was the 40th. What? Yes. So oh you, my goodness. Yeah, so is my memory is serving me correctly and 10 I, years it's been 10 years. Yeah. So it's your, in own, October, it's your own little anniversary. In it's October. My own anniversary. In October it will have been 10 years oh, since you we went are to gonna Houston. celebrate. Okay, that's crazy though that it's yeah. been 10 years. Yeah, and I remember in October. In October it will be 10 years. Yeah. So okay. and there were lots of things going on at that market for the yeah. anniversary, but and but that was your first time there. Wow. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. My kids were babies. Finn wasn't even born yet. That's crazy. Don't tell me this. (laughs) Harper was, yeah, Harper was not even one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. Jack was still a puppy. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Jack, my dog Jack just turned 10. That's right. I found a video of him the other day when he was a puppy. I have it still. Yeah, so he was born just a month before Harper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's just older than. Oh, okay. I remember. He's okay. just a little older than Chelsea's second child. Billy was very child. like, yeah. yeah, you know, this is my baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. 
Awesome. Well, one more question about the 50th anniversary then. So it was, they're celebrating it, the deadlines next March. So is the actual anniversary in 2024 or is it in 2025, but the, or they just extending it through to I, enter? I believe that, yeah, that it is in 2024 because that's when this fabric came yeah. out. Gotcha. I, yeah. So. Okay. So this is the year. Yes. This is the year. Cool. This is the year. Yeah. Awesome. And I remember we made a quilt. I remember making a quilt block for the 40th for a quilt that was... Like an anniversary quilt? Yeah, like an anniversary quilt. Yeah. So, But this is really fun that they're doing this contest. Awesome. Yeah. I should get Ashton to do the younger group. Oh, yeah. She <laughs> should. All right. Well, the email is still going great. Thank you again to everyone who's been sending in those questions and the, and the listener quilts. We'll have a listener question episode next month in April. So we'll be getting to a lot of those then. Um, the first first listener quilt pictures today that I want to share is from Marcel. And she actually had sent an email to my mom right before we announced the new email. And then she sent it right over to me as well. But she said, Sherry, I thought you might like to see two quilts I recently made. I work in a quilt shop in Thousand Oaks, California. The owner ordered some strawberry lemonade yardage and pre-cuts needed for the getaway quilt. She also ordered the boxed kit for the same line, which the box kit was your botanical... Chelsea's. Yes, botanical re remix. Remix. Okay, yeah. I thought it was remix. Okay, botanical remix in the same line. So I put them together as shop samples, and they are both up currently. Once they came in, I was real busy getting them pieced together. I felt like you trying to meet de a deadline. I wanted to get them completed quickly so that we could start selling the kits and they both turned out great and they really do and that it looks fantastic yeah, they there. Yeah, they look beautiful. In the, they did in a great the shop. Job. Mm -hmm. We should mention that Chelsea still has some of those kits available, right? Yes, yeah. I do. I do have botanical remix boxed kits and the box is so pretty and everything comes in the kit yeah. and yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we should yeah, especially yeah. now that people can see it here with yeah. how it looks in the shop. And we can yeah. link them in the description. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so she said, I enjoy your shows. Look forward to them. Have a great week. Can hardly wait for the new line, which Aww. is now out as Lugan Sunrise. <laughs> and you. she also said, what sounds like a new book with that quarter shop, which you guys also announced <laughs> wow, in the last episode. Wow, she's on top of yeah. it. Yeah. I And actually, when I read that email, I had I was like, there is? And then you guys <laughs> oh. mentioned it in the last episode. And I That's was like, funny. oh, wow, she... Yeah, she Kimberly actually it. shared it. Oh, okay. First, so then we figured it. She shared it, yeah, so we, we might can as share well. it. Yes. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, this next one is from Missy. She says, "My name's Missy. I've only been quilting for a year. I wanted to share my recent finish with you. It's your flower shop pattern with your bountiful bloom blooms fabric. It's not perfect, but I love it. Your fabrics and patterns are also beautiful." and really inspire me to keep making new quilts. I also wanted to share my grandmother's quilt with you, and and with that, I have a question. Do you have any tips for working with old fabrics? My, my mom passed away in 2014, and I found two of her old quilt tops and thought about finishing them by using one of them as a backing instead of mixing new fabric with old fabric. Any tips or suggestions would be greatly appreciated. So the wedding ring quilt in the picture is one of her finished quilts that I cherish. It was hand sewn by her and stays in my sewing room as an inspiration. I love watching your podcasts and have learned a lot from your videos and blogs. You brighten my Monday mornings. Thank you all for everything you do. And again, that's from, from Missy. Oh, thank you. Aww, thank you. There's, there's kind of a big trend right now where people are getting these antique quilts, quilt tops, getting them quilted cutting them up, using them for clothing. Oh, yeah. That, that's a thing. Where it's your family quilt, I, I feel like I wouldn't cut it up and use it for clothing. But if it's not quilted, I feel like, yeah, just back it with some plain muslin or something and get it quilted and bound so that you can enjoy it if it's just a top. If, it, if it's already quilted, I feel like... There are special washes out there if you want to wash it. You can soak it in your tub with different products that are just made to wash antique quilts. Yeah. So you should be able to get information on that from your local quilt shop. And yeah, lots of different... I actually have a quilt top that's an antique that is not quilted. And 
I've I've thought about just having Val long arm it and just put a, a solid backing yeah. and that way it's a quilt and it's finished and it's not gonna come apart since it's not quilted. I still have grandpa grandpa's antique quilt. Oh, you do? And I just remember we laid it out and That's right. there's enough separate blocks that I can frame hand sew them and then frame them one for each of of your girls. Well, or I they, other members of the family other members too. of the family need to receive them first because yeah. it's it's not there's not that many. Oh, that so a- all of his grand his granddaughters and his one daughter. But I do need. But there's still the whole quilt top. But it's so it's hand pieced. You know hexagons. Right. So I didn't. Yeah. Well, you need someday, to do that one someday. Day. <laughs> Someday, I know my mother-in-law would just so appreciate that, but yeah, I need to do that. It's safe. It's very safe. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you again for sharing those quilts with us, and that wedding ring quilt was really, those are just really neat to see, those older quilts. Okay, the next one here is a recent project in Strawberry Lemonade. It's from Susan. She says, hello, Billy. I really enjoy watching you, Chelsea, and your mom on the podcasts. I wanted to send along pictures of my first by Annie bag that I made in a class at People, Places, and Quilts in Somerville, South Carolina. I chose three different prints from Strawberry Lemonade and love how the bag turned out. It's called the Out to Lunch 2.0 bag. It was challenging with interior and exterior binding, an inside zipper pocket, side gussets, and a curved zipper panel. Thank you for the interesting podcast and the ability to share projects on this with this new email. Kindly from Susan. So it was and, beautifully made. Yeah, yeah. So pretty. So cute. Right. Every time I see bags, I just I wish I had the desire to make a bag. Yeah. And then I'm just begging my mom to make me a bag for Christmas. Like <laughs> I, I actually just had Marion quilt some soft and stable for me from Laguna oh, yeah. Sunrise so I can make a by Annie project. So maybe I'll get that done before the next podcast. I bet you will. <laughs> Yeah, that's back-to-back episodes where <laughs> someone has shared a bag made with your strawberry lemonade. Yeah, it's a great project. collection for bags. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. And that is it for this week's listener questions. Um, but again, it's a quilting life podcast at gmail.com if you have if you want would like to share any. And they are, are filling up. Uh, we're, we talked, we're like, maybe we cap it at about three an episode. We'll see if it depends. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, but so... We will get to them. I will once I know the episodes. I just send a quick email letting everyone know. Hey, this is when we're going to share your your project. So thank you. Yeah. yeah, and send the questions because we are going to tape that April listener question episode early. Yeah, yes. pretty soon. Yep, mm-hmm. we got to get ahead because that episode will air shortly before Billy's wedding. Yep, mm-hmm. ah, <laughs> guys. So we'll definitely be yeah. taping that early in April. It is like so what this is what's so funny recently like random people have been asking how you're doing and <laughs> I'm always like he's getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody the other day at baseball practice dropped their kid off and was like how's your brother doing? How's Billy doing? I'm like he's getting married. <laughs> They're probably like finally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and real quick I uh, it's the same as last episode we cuz yeah. we did these together. Um, yeah, we but- haven't changed the quilts. I forgot it already, even though he told me it's Emma's flowers for Emma, flowers, flowers for, Emma, for Emma, and the Garden Star sampler. Garden Star sampler. Yes. So again, all all the quilts are going to be linked in the description for everybody. Okay, so you guys ready to jump into our topics here? Yes. So yes. as my mom and sister had mentioned at the beginning of the episode, spring is now upon us. It just just turned into that season recently when you're watching this episode. So we figured now, as always, would be a good time to talk a little bit about spring cleaning focused on your sewing space and let you guys talk about some tips and things that you do at this time of the year to to make that happen. Yeah. Can I, oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here, here's the thing. Can I start, actually? Because I was going to say, mom is so like her. I This is what's so funny about this topic. I laughed. Because just the other day, I needed some specific bins. And I was like, oh, I'll just go check my mom's uh, blog posts. And there's just a billion perfect little blog posts all about organizing things Uh and cute little bins. Uh And I was scrolling through. Hopefully, you got some. You're probably like, who's reading these pages right now? (laughs) Um, 
But I just, my spring cleaning is so different from mom, but mom knows I'm the craziest cleaner because I have been this way since I was like six. She's so good at so spring good. cleaning. <laughs> I would like clean her pantries. I would de-weed the garden for fun. Like it was wild. But I just have to say mine does look a little bit different than mom's but you can you can go i won't go first it's okay well i i just wanted to say first and then you can go <laughs> spring cleaning reminds me of my grandma and my husband's grandmother they both one of them had a birthday on march 19th and the other one had a birthday on march 20th so both of them had birthdays right around the beginning of spring and they Ow. were both impeccably organized and wonderful spring cleaners. So I always think of both of those women at this time of year and think, oh my goodness, yeah. do you want to know what's so they funny? They were 10 years and one day apart. Yes. Yeah. But my middle child, Harper, and I'm a middle child too, uh -huh. she is so clean and organizes all the time. And yeah. my oldest daughter is not. <laughs> she is so messy yeah. and it drives me crazy. As far as like school, she always has everything planned and outlined, but like her room, it drives me nuts. But oh. Harper is very like, I got it, mom. Very clean. Finn is the same way though. Yeah. He's my youngest. Yeah. He's very organized. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Well, your younger brother couldn't stand sharing a bathroom with you. Oh, I know. And, and because he was the neater person yeah. back then. You were really organized in every aspect. Except the bathroom. Except the bathroom. Yeah. And my brother-in-law, who is younger than me, my husband and I actually moved in with our in-laws for a short time while we were buying our house that we live in now. And he was, my brother-in-law was That's in right. high school. And he came up to me one night at dinner and said, I'm going to go teach you how to properly clean a bathroom. And I was like so embarrassed. I'm like, what? Cam, I clean bathrooms all the time. And then he went to the store and bought me a new brush because he could have sworn I used like his brush. I said, I did it. And he's like, there's hair everywhere. Like, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Oh, but yeah, we love spring, spring cleaning and it's really important in your sewing space. Yeah. So so do you want to start then and talk I about what you're doing? I do want to start because I was so ready for some spring cleaning. Our family has, we kind of had like, this, <laughs> this is like my theme, you guys. We were all sick for like months. just one month. For the winter. For the, <laughs> for winter. the winter. Yes. Sick for the winter. And just recently, my son had to miss a whole week of school. And so he was home and I was, you know, I obviously wasn't sewing. I was taking care of him and my husband kind of had it and then I kind of got it. And so I was like ready. I was bursting at the seams to like clean, deep clean my house from <laughs> everyone being sick and antibiotics and all the doctors, whatever. And so I did. And Finn finally was able to go back to school. Everyone was like back. <laughs> And I had not actually touched my Laguna Sunrise fabrics. There was no room for it. I still hadn't gone through because strawberry lemonade shipped around the same time. Yes. Bolts and bolts of it. And I thought, I have to do something. And I did. I pulled everything out of my closet except for like boxes on the top shelf. I still have to do that. And I went through and I organized and I um, have a box of stuff to sort through either for donations or, and I even set aside some quilts that I'm hoping to donate. Oh, so nice. I need to probably talk to Carrie. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, next time we're in California. But I did and I was able to make all my strawberry lemonade and Laguna Sunrise and everything fit. And then guess what, guys? Because everything was organized and clean. Oh, I did all my drawers and my desk. Wow. Filed my taxes. <laughs> I was done with it. <sighs> And I was able to cut out my Laguna Sunrise quilts. And I even cut out the one for Marion that she made. And I felt like sewing. And that's, I think, what it does. And I think that's the positive is I didn't feel like starting a project because there, everyone was sick and nothing was clean. And as soon as I cleaned, I had room. Thus, I could see my cutting table and I cut out all my quilts and they're all in cute little organized boxes and I'm sewing right now and I love it. I love that. I'm don't, happy. Don't you think that sometimes it's a barricade? We think that we don't want to spend the time to clean and organize because we're going to, that will take time away from our sewing. 
but yet we don't realize that that will free us up to sew quicker, easier, more relaxed, you know, by starting with that cleaning and organizing. This is so deep, you guys. Yes. That's, I really feel like it's like a mental stressor and block Yeah. when you don't do it. But you're right. You think, no, I have other things to do. Like I, that's going to just open a whole new can of worms if I do this. Not realizing that if you just do it, all of these other options are available to you now because your space is clean. And I think it's just mentally healthy too to spring clean. I agree. <laughs> I, I recently did some spring cleaning in my sewing room and it was actually brought about because I was doing a photo shoot and I was working with a new photographer and she did a fabulous job. But we were initially going to go to a different location for the photos, but the weather, we were we were getting some winds and clouds, and we ultimately decided just to try to do the photo shoot in my studio, and we were going to do it, the photo shoot on a Friday, and anyway, we decided to do it in my studio, and I said, I need until Monday. I have to clean Yeah, if you're going to come shoot photos in here, and so I did a ton of cleaning, and like you, it just felt so good. I didn't get it all done. I made a list of some more things I want to do right away, but it just like freed me up to not only have the beautiful photo shoot. Notice the words, it freed me. Yes, but <laughs> also to start sewing. I, I recently, I thought at that point that I was done with all my Laguna Sunrise sewing, but I ended up making the quilt. If you saw our last podcast, the tulip and vine quilt, if my sewing room hadn't been completely clean, I couldn't have made that quilt in a weekend. Can I just tell you how so, much I love that quilt? I need so. like a recorder right now to like make a little ditty about tulip and vine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it was just wonderful to get things cleaned and organized. And I meant to ask you, did do you have fabrics from all of our fabric collections that you've saved to use in scrap quilts or I did and I put them in a into a quilt oh okay I did but it was only up until like a certain right quilt so you don't still have little I, I, fat quarters or anything. I do oh. I do that's the part that hasn't organized I have boxes bins up on the top shelf that I haven't organized and what I do is I take all the extra fat quarters and I stick them in a bin so I have fat quarters from, yeah. Do you have any tips for me? <laughs> well, I think I have some things that I still have. I have a bunch of or seashore. Or do you need something? <laughs> well, I might need something. But I do have some seashore drive that I'm going to, that is still on bolts. It's thinning out. I need to wow. take them off the bolts. And I need to cut some fat quarters <gasps> I to do save too. for me and save. Wait, wait, wait. I just cut. That's what I did, too. I took those bolts and I cut half yard cuts. Yes. And I have half yard cuts of Seashore Drive, which is really strange. Yeah. I was going to make bundles and put them in my Etsy. Oh, you should. Because yeah. Yeah. you can't find those fabrics anymore. Right. So yeah. many bundles, so little time. But I think when I do that, though, I'm going to do some half yard cuts and then some fat quarters. And I think I'm just going to do it all by color instead of by collection at that point with the fat quarters. I would. Not the half yards, but yeah. yeah. I want to. I just lately have been cutting half yards because I'm like, don't people want more fabric to use? And then yes. I don't have to do an extra cut. Exactly. To cut the end off. Yeah. And I feel like getting those cardboard bolts out of the sewing room just Save frees so up so much, much space yes gives me a lot more space oh and i still have yet to cut i can cut half yard bundles of strawberry lemonade i just haven't done oh, it yet you have some left oh i have the whole collection left oh you're gonna have people knocking at your door i i <laughs> haven't done it because i need to i needed to get my so actually yeah actually by the time this is filmed i'll probably have some bundles in my shop oh i I might need to buy some you. Might, from you. you should come over. I have okay. the whole collection. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. So what is, a, Billy had some great questions on here. What do you find the most difficult to keep clean and organized throughout the year in your sewing room? I love that question. I I mean, dif difficult to keep clean. I'm kind of like dad where it. What, I like to clear my table so things appear clean. But this is the thing, like as far as like drawers with like invoices and, and important things like that, that's where I struggle. And I struggle like 
in in the closet and you want to know what else i struggle with i bought the cutest little bench seat it's a little gray one except guess what guys evil inside you lift it in their space inside so guess what's in there just extra scraps the other day i lifted it and i was like Oh, that's where that block went. So They're everything like, appears clean in your room, but you you hoard it all into cabinets well, or drawers and everything. The cabinets I finally cleaned out, but yes, I hoard in the closet. <sighs> I have those alpha shelves oh, and right. I hoard stuff in there. I still have so much to do. A lot has been done, but yeah, I have that. I opened that little bench seat the other day because I had two quilt projects stacked on top of it. Oh. And then now I'm sewing those. And so I had, and I opened it and I'm like, holy cow, there's like a half project here. There's tons of fat quarters here. It was like a ton of stuff. Uh, And I was like, when did I put all this in here? What is going on? I probably have 500 half square triangles that have been sewn but not trimmed. Oh, I I pray for you. That I need to go through and trim and put into a project. That I I need to organize those. Purposely (laughs) did not do a quilt with... with (laughs) half square triangles in this group you want to know why because i was tired of trimming yeah trimming 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 well these Ugh. were from flying geese blocks you know how when oh, you cut it end. off yeah 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 and then i would use them for leaders and enders and so so i have a ton of laguna sunrise half square triangles and i actually still have a lot of strawberry lemonade half square triangles and i just need to i need to put them in a bin put them on my cutting table and then trim like 20 a day is what I need to do and trim them all to two and a half inches or some usable size and oh my goodness that's what I need to do but you're when you mentioned that you you know stick things away where they're not seen that's what I used to do when I was a kid my mom had this hall closet my parents (laughs) and it had mostly sheets in it but I would clean my room and I would like stick stuff I didn't want behind the sheets in that closet so that my room really looked clean and organized. But then one day my mom what? decided to clean her linen closet. And she was just like, what is all this stuff? <laughs> it was like two years worth of my uh, accumulate stuffing this stuff. This sounds, see, that would stress me out. <laughs> Anything to do with my bedroom portion, I am like, things need to be in it makes my husband go mad because he's like, where was this? And I'm like, well, it was in a pile of junk. And he's like, that was my pile of junk. <laughs> well, and just to and clarify, I know where my stuff is in my pile of junk. Like, <laughs> just to clarify, Chelsea's sewing room is actually a sitting area off of their yeah primary bedroom. It's so supposed to be a sitting. It's room. It's supposed to be a sitting room, but she took it over for her sewing room. Oh, I took room. it over, <laughs> and I extended it actually into part of the bedroom. Right, and my husband's like whoa, <laughs> like, when did this happen? Because <laughs> now I have a work desk and a chair. Oh, and... You know, I haven't been over to see you. You've got to come you over. You guys were too sick. You I was... got... Yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen you yeah. in weeks, Mom. I need to come over and look. Okay. Yeah. No, okay, so I attribute it to the, junk, to the junk drawer. You know how everyone has a junk drawer? That's kind of like this stool that has okay. the secret compartment in it. That's my junk drawer of the sewing world. Um, and everything goes in the junk drawer. And if you want to find something random, go look in the junk drawer. You'll find it. So I do have a tip. I have this really cute little aqua trash can. It's metal. It is. That I got from, I think, World Market several I years ago. World Market. Okay. But it's it's a nice size. It's only about maybe, what would you say, 14 Yay, inches high. tall, 12 to 14 inches tall. Yeah. Anyway, I put scraps in there from things that I'm working on and then when it gets full then I go back and look and decide do I want to keep this or do I want to put it in the donate bag wait a minute and that's been super helpful for me so it fills up but but see it's not so big that it's overwhelming where is this trash can it's just on the floor in my sewing room where in the sewing room just behind my cutting table yeah as yeah it's by the cutting underneath the moda clock I'm really afraid I might have put actual trash in there before. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll I'll have to donate it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll go in the donate bag. Yeah. So I actually oh have. Gosh. I was just talking about this I th- the other day recently. I have four bins where I put all the scraps from current collections. So, wow. and I only keep the four most recent. So I've got Laguna Sunrise, Strawberry Lemonade favorite things and bountiful blooms are the four collections that I have right now in those four bins. 
So when we get another collection, the... <gasps> you have to remove one fabrics of those, from one of the bins. Yes, one of those will have to be removed and I'll cut it up and put it in where I store it by either size, five inch squares, two and a half inch yeah. strips, blah, 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 fat quarters. So Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, but no, but the little green, the aqua garbage pin has been a really helpful thing for me organizing because it's not so big that it's overwhelming to sort through. Yeah. And then when it when I open that lid and it's too full to stuff anything else in, that's when I take it and I stick it on the top of my sewing table and then I know, okay, you have to go through this. You are just a totally different person than I, I am. I know. But then <laughs> I do donate a lot of it. I decide sometimes I decide, oh, this is just all going in the donate bag, so does Michelle still do classes out here, sewing classes? Do you still donate to her? I, I still donate to one of her students. My friend who does my hair, actually, yeah. her daughter takes sewing from her. Yeah. And so I give a lot of fabric oh, love, yeah. to Elsie. Yeah. I give a lot of fabric She's to Elsie so for her sewing. So, yeah. I love it. Well, my space is feeling much better, but we'll just forget about the stool bench for now. Okay. <laughs> So yeah. our next topic is spring sewing. And I was also excited about this because I have been sewing my Laguna Sunrise quilts. And I felt kind of some camaraderie because Camille Ross Kelly posted yeah. on social media when she announced her new collection, Rosemary Cottage. She said, guys, not I don't have my quilts done. I have a couple coming back, but I'm still sewing. And that is the most real thing I could. And I I loved that because I was like, I'm still sewing because that's just yeah. life. And I am enjoying it so much. I have loved sewing with Laguna Sunrise. So I think I have one or two more to finish up. By the, this time this By airs. this time, yeah. they should be almost done. But basically, that's what I have been doing for my spring sewing. And I think after that, I'm just going to kind of go to the drawing board. And I have... um a quilt for fat quarter shop that I should be finishing up soon. And that's kind of what I have going. Yeah. I'm kind of, my year has kind of been based off. I have found myself saying, yeah, I'm going to finish this quilt, you know, before my birthday, but this other quilt, as long as I'm done before Billy's wedding, I keep saying yeah. that every time. Don't yeah. you though? I'm always like, okay, before Billy's wedding, this is what I'm going to have done. I know. And I don't know why I'm doing that. I just feel like then we can like just really enjoy that weekend and yes, all the festivities. And then after that, I think we'll be sewing with our summer collection. Oh, yes. So I do want to get all the, that. And that's so funny that you said that because I want to get all of my quilts for that collection designed before the wedding. Yeah. And we also have another fabric collection that we need to design. Right. And I found myself the other, I was telling Mason, he's like, hey, what do you have coming over the next little bit? Because I help him with his little league team right i'm just like the dugout mom guys the team but, mom yeah the team mom <laughs> yes and luckily my best friend's son is on the team this year he's old enough to play coach pitch. oh so you guys can kind oh, of do it together. finally we'll both be together for the most part oh, nice it'll be nice to have her in there with me but i the collection too i was like oh yeah i gotta design a new collection before the wedding <laughs> It's always before the wedding. Wow, I didn't know this was such a it's, it is. marker in the year for you guys. And Ashton <laughs> on the way home asked me, I ordered a dress and I think it's going to work. It's really pretty. I got to get my dress. Oh my goodness. Ha good luck. <laughs> Holy cow. What color are you getting? I, I thought I'd just go to the mall maybe and just see. But it has see. to be a color. Right. And just see if anything in any of those colors that okay, I could well, find. I do have some suggestions for you. I'll take them. Because I also have another dress I really, really like that looks great on mothers oh, of, of the groom. <laughs> I have okay. done so much extensive Send me research. The link, well, please. I get the dress, and my daughter is a junior bridesmaid, and she was like, Is that for me? And I'm like, No, I have to find mine first. Like, <laughs> so now she's all concerned about her dress and which one she wants. Oh, if you found one for that I would could use, send it. I found it. You you definitely have to hem it. Okay. It's very sparkly. Okay. Do you like that? Yeah. It okay. It's really pretty. Yeah. Send it. Okay, perfect. I'll send it. <laughs> Sorry. We keep talking right. about <laughs> It's a big deal. But it's good to know you guys yeah. are uh, getting ready for it. Yeah. Okay. But sorry. No. So what are you spring sewing? So spring sewing. Well, I feel like tulip and vine. 
was really inspired by me wanting to, to make a spring and vine. So, yes, a spring table runner. And I that need quilt. like a fiddle. <laughs> but <laughs> but no, like you're saying, this the fabrics and the strawberry lemonade and the Laguna Sunrise collection are both so perfect for spring sewing. I feel like yeah. I can make all the things. I'm making tulip and vine. And I those. want the pattern as soon okay. as it's ready. Yes, Please. I will. <laughs> I'm like obsessed with it. I walked in. You, I know I said this before, but I walked in and I was like, what? Mom. It, you should make it totally scrappy. Should I? Yeah. Or strawberry <laughs> lemonade too. Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. But yeah, do you, so do you change out your quilt decor in your home for spring? I just spring? did. Okay, so what did you what did you put I finally out? put out Summer Slice. Oh. I had never had it out. Oh, fun. Because when we were sharing it, it was like getting into fall. Right. And I put up all my Bountiful Blooms and then Christmas and we were sick, so I didn't take down Christmas till <laughs> the end of January. Yeah. <laughs> like my tree, guys, was in my house just like creating an ecosystem, okay? <laughs> it was like in the house forever and yeah i just barely put them out i think they're so oh i did i have a glass cabinet under my tv stand it's it's my tv stand right. it's under my tv and i did change it all for um balboa quilts and seashore drive quilts oh, fun. and then on one section is all my red white and blues folded up oh. i'm i i'm like yeah. slowly accumulating like categories people yes. And my cabinet, oh, I reorganized my cabinet. Oh. Refolded every quilt in the cabinet, did it on the bottom. Let me just tell you, seasonal. Oh. So I have heart quilts, and then I have extra patriotic, and then I have fall, and I have Christmas. Up on top is any quilt that can be used throughout the year that is just like spring and summery in all of our collections, and oh. they're all perfectly folded. Nice. And it's beautiful, and it's filling up. <laughs> So, and that's a big cabinet. Too. It is a huge cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge cabinet. So I don't know what I'm going to do with, I don't know. My yeah. house is only so big. <laughs> I know. We're going to have to, I'm going to have to donate some again yeah. too, I realized. Sorry, that kind of goes with clean. Spring cleaning. Yeah, spring cleaning. Yeah. No, but you're right. Look, Seashore Drive quilts are perfect for spring decorating they are. too and sewing seashore drive balboa are always my go-to because they're soft too yeah. they're not like super loud right and the blues and the purples kind of like are great hues but i am still in love i think strawberry Le lemonade was just huge in my mind it it is so pretty i put my summer slice quilt fully down the ladder because i was like I have to show every row. Yes. And yeah. yeah. And so I just love, I love that collection. I think it's perfect for this time of year. I actually never even put out any of my heart quilts this year just because I took Christmas down so late, but yeah, the girls still had the quilts on their beds, the heart quilts. I did finally get my coastal summer medallion quilt hung up in the hallway where there had been a Christmas quilt. Yeah. But I do still have one really dark quilt upstairs that I feel like is more winter that I need to switch you out for a spring. Yeah, I need to switch that one out. Do you know what you need? What, is it the quilt above the bench? It's the quilt upstairs on yeah. that dark. In fact, I want to kind of take that dark quilt rack off. Get a brighter and one? Get it. We'll just paint it. Oh, paint a it. A lighter color. Yeah. Then I could feel like, because it's so dark, I feel like it wouldn't look good with a yeah seashore drive quilt hanging there i i really like i want to touch on this question really quick it says would you say you are more productive this time of year when compared to the holiday season and winter and absolutely i yeah i even told my husband i was like mason something has just like clicked i am so happy to be sewing i feel like i'm getting so much done i don't know if it has to do with the weather i don't know if it has i just feel like march hits and i like feel so much better. I don't know if it's getting because it's getting lighter. It's staying lighter, right? Is that like a thing? Yes. Yep. And yeah, I I get. I just we lose an hour of sleep, but we we have more. You gain daylight. so much more. <laughs> yes. Okay. We gain light. I need it in yeah. my life, you guys. Well, like, what, well, once you get over that that initial like sleep deprivation, yeah. right? Then and then you know, then it's just onward. The days just get longer all the way till summer. So yeah, yeah. But it just like smells different too. 
I the feel bir- like the birds are chirping in the morning. I do. I feel more motivated to sew. I feel like spring is probably one of my most spring and summer are probably yeah. two of my most productive times so for productive. sewing. Yes. I I feel like literally my, yeah, my kids are like, wow, you have been sewing a lot. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like super happy to do it right now. It doesn't feel like gloomy right now. It feels happy. Exactly. So yeah, I feel like I am more productive this time of year, but I'm I'm definitely more motivated and I feel like it helped getting the spring cleaning and now I've just been sewing and feel excited about this year. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a big part of it. I think that spring doing a little bit of spring cleaning in your sewing space, even if it even if you're not reorganizing the whole room, just doing yeah. little projects can really help motivate you to get more done this time of year. I love that because it's really not about doing 17 hours of deep cleaning in one day. It's right. what can I do this day that helps, you know, that agenda, you know, getting something small. Yes. I mean, clean out one drawer. Yes. You will feel so good about yourself if you clean out one drawer. And I talk to a lot of people that say they just do a kind of a basic cleanup after every project and that just really sets the stage for the next one yes vacuum i like yeah i have my new little roller which by the way did you use that already oh yeah on the dog hair yeah it works it works yeah yeah on some of his uh bedding and everything i just you know i I just used it to see and and in the car yeah you just brush it along this, we're talking about something I think from three episodes ago. Sorry, maybe, maybe two. Two episodes. But it was the ago, it's, think, it was called yeah. the Nubby. Yeah. That 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 particular thing I can't m- remember what the um, yeah. brand was of the rest of it, but but yeah, no, it works. Awesome. Awesome. Well, now uh, talking about this makes me even more excited to just go. I just want to get in there yeah. and sew. I gotta and go home and sew right now, you guys. So. Yes, we uh, hope that you're enjoying spring sewing too. Or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I know it's fall yeah. <laughs> for you. <laughs> so, and I know we have listeners in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But there, there is a seasonal shift. So yeah. regardless of whether it's getting cooler or warmer. If you want to know about fall sewing, go back to uh, probably somewhere in October and listen <laughs> yes. to that episode. Yes, <laughs> we got you covered. <laughs> yes. So our next episode will be April 8th and there will be three episodes in April. Yeah. So send yeah. in those. Send in your questions. Yes. L- we'll, listener we'll be, questions. We'll be recording that episode pretty shortly after this this one airs, airs. I believe. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. So and yeah. Happy spring sewing and thanks so much for stopping by. <laughs>